The objectives of impression making are to capture all potential denture bearing surfaces and tissues to provide support, retention and stability of the denture under function. The denture base also acts as a foundation for improved appearance of the lips. The denture should extend peripherally to record the resiliency of the surrounding limiting structures, which include creating appropriate length and width of the final denture borders. A custom tray is used to make the final impression for an edentulous patient. Individual or custom trays have borders that can be adjusted so they control the movable soft tissues around the impression and do not disturb them. At the same time, space can be provided inside the tray so that the shape of the tissues covering the denture bearing area may be recorded with minimal or selective displacement in the primary denture bearing areas. Begin by checking the extensions of the custom tray. Make sure that the tray covers the buckle shelf area and the retromolar pad. Provide clearance for the labial, buckle and lingual frena and make sure that there is 1.5 to 2 mm between the tray and the full depth of the sulcus when the lip is moved away horizontally. Once the tray is fully seated, move the lower lip away from the vestibule to check the labial and the buccal extensions. Retraction of the lip and cheeks would activate the buccal and the labial frena and make it easier to visualize the extensions. To check the lingual extensions, use a mirror in the distolingual area and ask the patient to elevate and protrude their tongue. If the tray is displaced, then the lingual borders are overextended and you need to adjust them. You can see here that the borders of the tray are slightly overextended. So I need to make the borders 1 mm shorter and also to mark the labial and the buccal frenum. So use an indelible pencil to mark the labial and the buccal frenum and to draw the overextensions so they could guide you when you do the adjustment using a straight hand piece. So here I'm using an indelible marker to mark the desired borders on the tray, as this would guide me when I do the reduction. Mount an acrylic bear on a chair side straight hand piece. Use the bird to remove all overextensions and to provide relief for the labial and the buccal frena. Now you can see that the borders are adequate and we're ready to start the border molding procedure. Impression compound is the material of choice for border molding. Its advantage is that it can be placed incrementally. You can observe the surface, trim it back, add more material and then readapt the periphery. Each addition and section of the tray border can be seamlessly adapted to the previous compound. Impression compound is a mixture of waxes and thermoplastic resin plus fillers that increase the viscosity at high temperatures and provide rigidity at room temperature. The material is softened by heat over a flame. Move the material over the flame and don't allow it to ignite or boil. Once the material has softened, you will realize that it becomes a bit glossy. Now it's time to apply the material on the borders of the tray. Use the stick as a pen and apply it on the borders of the tray and as we're doing this segment by segment, we'll do the labial segment first. Reheat the material 
over the flame and temper it with hot water before putting it in the patient's mouth. You may use some Vaseline on your fingertips to shape the borders. Once you're happy with the appearance of the material, you may now transfer to the patient's mouth and start border molding. Now place the tray in the patient's mouth. To border mold the labial frenum, seat the tray and then retract the lip and horizontally to view the labial frenum and then move it in an upward direction. This would border mold the labial frenum. In most cases it's prominent and you can also instruct the patient to squeeze their lips together. Once removed from the patient's mouth, dry the tray and inspect it under good light. You'll see what we call here loss of gloss, meaning that impression compound, once it contacts the tissues, it will lose its glossy characteristics and the material will become dull. If it becomes dull this way, it means that you've done the border molding correctly and the material has recorded the full depth and width of the sulcus. Inspect the inside of the tray. Make sure that no material or no impression compound material extends beyond the height of the tray border inside the tray, as we'll be using zinc oxide fusion or later to make the impression on the fitting surface. So heat the lacron carver and remove all excess material from the inside of the tray. So once you're happy with the first segment, it's now time to do the second segment, which is the right buccal vestibule. So dry the tray, heat the distal end of the last segment that you just did, and then heat the green stick just like we described previously. Apply then, then apply the material on the borders of the tray, temper it with hot water, and then use Vaseline on your fingertips to adjust the borders of the anticipated vestibule. Seat the tray into the patient's mouth. Hold the patient's cheeks between your index finger and your thumb and start moving the cheeks in an outward and then upward direction. This is to border mold the buccal frenum and the buccal vestibule. Notice how the buccal frenum is nicely molded into the tray borders and how the material has lost its gloss, meaning that it's contacted the tissues everywhere. So as you can see here that there is an excess material inside the tray. So use again, use a sharp carver to remove the material from the inside. Now repeat the procedure for the left side using the same steps. So first apply the material on the borders, heat it above the flame and then temper it in hot water. Now 
notice here that the buccal frenum was not molded really accurately. So you can reheat this segment, apply more material, and then reseat it in the patient's mouth to fully record the buccal frenum. Now notice the difference and see how the buccal frenum is molded correctly. Now that we've border molded the right and left buccal segments, it's time to do the anterior lingual segment. Again, apply the material, heat it over the flame, and then temper it with hot water. Ask the patient to follow the instructions to border mold the anterior lingual segment. Elevate the tongue, protrude, move to the right and then to the left and then swallow. Inspect the tray borders, remove excess material and then it's time now to do the distolingual area. We're going to do right and left separately. One more time, apply, heat, temper. In this segment, we'll be border molding the distolingual area and the retromolar pad area. Seat the tray in the patient's mouth. Ask the patient to elevate their tongue, protrude it, move it to the right and left, and then to swallow. Ask them to swallow for a second time as forceful swallowing would further elevate the floor of the mouth and you'll be able to record the retromylohyoid fossa. Repeat the procedure twice to make sure that the material has reached the full depth of the sulcus. So when you look at the borders, you should be looking at a slight curve in the distolingual area, meaning that you've recorded the retromylohyoid fossa properly. And you should be looking at seamless transition between the different segments. So make sure that you heat the distal end of the previous segment before making a new addition. And now repeat the same procedures for the left distolingual area and the retromolar pad area. Again, ask the patient to protrude the tongue, move it to the right and left, and then swallow twice. The border molded tray should have seamless transition between the segments and should record the full depth and width of the sulcus. Zinc oxide eugenol is the material of choice for the final impression procedure. It is supplied as a form of two pastes, zinc oxide, the white paste, and eugenol, the red paste. Equal lengths of the material are dispensed into a mixing pad. The manufacturer further controls the ratio of the two pastes by using different size openings of each tube. The material is mixed using a spatula on a mixing pad. Use the side of the spatula to collect the material and spread it over the mixing pad in a figure 8 motion until a homogeneous mix is achieved. Initial set of the material is 3 to 5 minutes and full setting is achieved in 10 minutes.
Start loading the tray from the distal end gradually. This is to avoid incorporating air bubbles and to ensure that you have a homogeneous, smooth impression surface. Apply Vaseline on the patient's face. This is to prevent the material from adhering to the face so it becomes easier to clean afterwards. The nurse is going to hand you over the impression tray and then you're going to seat the tray into the patient's mouth as we've described previously. Fully seat the tray and then repeat the border molded movements in the order we've mentioned earlier. So first, You'll start with the labial sulcus, retract the lip horizontally, and then upward and inward. Border mold the right and left buccal vestibules, and then ask the patient to move the, to protrude the tongue, move it to the right and left, to the back, and then swallow. And then swallow one more time. This is to activate the lingual area. Repeat the sequence two or three times until the material starts reaching the initial set. Remove the impression material five minutes after it reached the initial setting. Inspect the impression and make sure that you've captured all anatomic details. Disinfect the impression in 2% glutaraldehyde solution for five minutes. Rinse it and dry it well, and then send it to the lab for the construction of record blocks.